Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I bring you the 570. This is the ProStar 570. It's actually out of a Ranger, and uh, this is going to be the start of a rebuild process. That's right. I'm going to be showing how to disassemble, rebuild, and get your 570 back up and running again. Now granted, this is not the motor out of the Ranger that I have. Uh, that motor actually exploded and completely tore itself apart. So this is a used engine that I purchased from a Polaris dealership. Um, it's all whole. It is knocking, so it does need a rebuild. But their customer just opted to have a new engine put in. So I bought this from Polaris so I could rebuild it and get it into the Red 570 and get that back up and going. So pretty much whether you have the Sportsman, the Razor, the Ranger, or the Ace, these rebuild instructions are going to be pretty much the same. So without further ado, let's get into this. Let's start tearing this thing down. All right. So as I previous stated, the, uh, this motor came from Polaris. So a lot of the components they took off of the customer's other engine, they reused on the new motor. So some of this stuff is just loosely on here because I just want to demonstrate, uh, you know, basically how to take it apart. So first thing that we do, of course, is get your crank sensor out, which is right here. All right, get that guy out. It's just a eight millimeter. And then start getting your covers off. So first we're going to take these bolts off and it's going to get the water pump housing off. Okay, water pump housing is off. Then you're going to want to get all these bolts off to get your stator cover off. They're eight millimeters again. And uh, I got it right here. Okay, now that you got all your bolts undone, now you're gonna wanna pull your stator cover off. You're gonna have to pry. There's prying tabs all the way around it because the stator is on this cover and it fits into the flywheel. So you're fighting the magnetic force of the stator and the flywheel. So it's not gonna pop off this easy, okay? It's gonna, you're gonna wiggle it and it's gonna, and it will keep coming and then all of a sudden it will pop and come right off, all right? So we got the cover off, I'll turn it around and there's your stator, okay? Now, there's nothing in here because again, they took parts out to use for the other one. So once you get your cover off, you're basically going to have, all right, your flywheel sitting there, and then you'll have your your starter ring sitting up here, okay, like, like so, and then there's going to be a shaft right here. Sometimes that shaft comes out with the cover. Um, I couldn't find mine. It's in my parts bin over there somewhere, but all right, so pretty much you're going to have a nut here, okay? This is a inch and eighth. So you take your crank nut off, all right? And then using a puller, you can pull this off or you can get in here with a couple pry bars and give the crank a couple taps with the pry bar and it will pop it loose. Now, be very careful because if you're not replacing your crank, you don't want to mess this up too much. And one of the things before you start hitting is in here is a jet an oil jet, and you wanna get that oil jet out. So pretty much to get the oil jet out, you're gonna use a four millimeter Allen, and stick it in there, and of course all my stuff's gonna fall off. Pretend that didn't happen, but you're gonna loosen it, and then get that oil jet out of there, okay? This is crucial, especially if you're gonna hit off of your crank, because if you peen this over, there it is. You won't be able to get this little oil jet out. That's all it is. It's an oil jet. So save this because the new crankshaft may not come with one. So get your oil jet out. All right. And now, whether you want to use a, the Polaris Polar to get this off, or like I said, you can stick a pry bar in here, push against the outer hub, and give the crank a couple whacks, and the start the flywheel will pop off. Now when that happens, usually this gear comes flying out like that, but it's okay. So, there we go. There is your flywheel, your one-way starter ring. See, it only goes one way in your starter. So you're going to set these to the side, 
along with your nut. And there we go. Now, like I said, there will be a shaft here. Set that aside because you're going to have to reuse that. So now we got this taken down. Next thing you're going to want to do is up here, get your breather and take your breather off. Again, it's just two eight millimeter bolts. You pull your breather off and then pull the actual breather out. And this is probably why it went bad. She was getting dirt in there. Oops. So we'll have to clean that up. All right. Now, that's pretty much it for that portion. Now we can get into our chains, and you can see here, this oil pump chain is shot. Look at, look at that. Horrible. We got our timing chain and everything. So now we can work, now that we got all this taken off, now we can work on getting the cylinder. And what we're going to do is start getting the top end off. Start with taking the valve cover off. There's three bolts that hold it on. They're T40s. So you're going to get these guys out. And I just found out I didn't charge my battery. So I got to do this the old-fashioned way with hand tools. It's okay. All right, so let's get this off. All right, there we go. So we got our valve cover bolts off. Now, one of the things I recommend doing is as you take stuff off, go buy a box of Ziploc bags. Every piece you take off, if you have to, you know, put these three bolts in a Ziploc bag and write valve cover bolt, and that's it. That way, you keep everything organized and you know what bolts go where. So we're going to get this off. Usually, this pops right up. All right. And there we go. There's our, our camshafts and everything. Whoops. Kicking the camera. So, and man, these cams, they look good. Wow, they are in great shape. Well, maybe not. Got a broken cam right there. Look at that. I don't know if y'all can see that. It's broken. Oh, boy. Well, good thing we'll have new cams to go in here. Jeez. Okay. So next, we're going to get the tension off of the chain using a inch and sixteenth on your tensioner here. Okay. I'm just going to give it a couple pops and pull the tensioner out. Now, oil's going to come out of here. Yuck, yuck, yuck. There we go. There's the factory Polaris cam chain tensioner thing. Yeah. I know how to talk. <laughs> All right. So this we're going to be updating is to the uh, hot cams uh, tensioner, which I have a video on that. All right. And now our timing chain is loose, as you can see. All right. Okay. So now we can take the top portion apart. I'm going to take off your chain guide bolts okay again ziploc bags organize your bolts and everything however you feel is right yeah look at that all right and then we're going to take our cam retainer off All right, and pop our retainer off. And you just gotta kind of wiggle it, and up she comes. And there's your retainer. Always inspect in here for any gouges or any scoring. And now we can take our cams out. And you just slip first cam out. And slip your second cam out. And there we go. We got the cams out. Everything in here looks good. This all looks good. I just want to show you all this. Here's the cam. What the heck? I don't know what would have caused that. 
I don't see any damage up here. It's like it just broke off. And I did find a piece of it right there. It was sitting on top of that head bolt. So, all right, let's get this head off, geez. Now, using a breaker bar, I know they're chrome. Let's just, I've been doing this long enough. I know what my tools are good for. And anyhow, you're gonna wanna break these four free with a breaker bar, okay, which I've already done. Uh, what I like to do is lay this down on the ground and then you can break these free. So we got those broken free. And then we're gonna take our Gunola Work Pro, Amazon. Really good gun, not too bad. Got our head bolts. Get your head bolts pulled out. Now, I replace these every time. Uh, I couldn't get a clear answer if these were one time use or not. I don't chance it. I just get new ones from Polaris and put new head bolts in. So, get those four guys out of there. Just like that. All right. And then you're going to come over here on this side, and you got these two eights. There we go. Let the gun do the work. There we go. It's got to break her free. All righty, there we go. And now we're ready to pull the cylinder off. Usually just give it a little pop and off she comes. And there's our cylinder. Ooh, got a new spark plug in it. Look at all the carbon on the valves, my good. Ugh. All right, we'll get to this later. Set that to the side. All right, and here we go. You know what? I think somebody rebuilt this and did something wrong, and that's why that was broken. So this all looks like somebody's been in here before. Yep, probably somebody doing what they're not supposed to be doing. Okay. So now we can get our cylinder off and just pretty much same thing. Give it a couple of whacks and maybe we'll, there we go. There we go. And there's our cylinder. Ooh, I don't see any cross hatching left. Ugh. All right, so now we're back over on this side. We've got the top all undone. Let's get these guides out. T40. Like that. Pull your guides out. Inspect your guides for wear. Again, if you're doing a full rebuild, put some new guides in it. You might as well. And then... We can get our chain off. So using an eight millimeter, we're gonna take our lower chain retainer off, which is this guy right here. One and two. All right. Same thing, check this. Aha, look at that. Wow, it ground right down into that. Man, looking at this, somebody did rebuild this. It's got an aftermarket piston in it. The crank looks almost brand new. But what I'm suspecting now 
is they never replace the timing chains. So the timing chain just was wearing through this, putting metal throughout the whole motor and uh, took it out. So more than likely, either that or that factory tensioner failed, not keeping proper timing. That's why I hate those things. That's why I always upgrade to the hot shot or hot cams. So get your chain out, set those aside, put new ones in for sure now. All right, so basically to get the oil pump chain and gears off, 10 millimeter, I was wrong. It's an eight millimeter. Sorry, eight mil. There you go. Okay, now this, there's your chain, get that out of the way. And there's your gear for your counterbalance, which is gonna have a washer on it. And see, they're marked out, okay? So keep these together. I usually, same thing, put everything in separate Ziploc bags, mark it. And now for your oil pump, same thing, you can eight mil. Oh no, it won't work. All right, so to get your oil pump out. Now, I'm doing this on purpose. Usually, I loosen them both while the chain's still on there because it helps pull it off. But if you can't, they've got these little holes. You can, you know, put a pick in there or you can take a pair of pliers or voice grips and just grab your gear like that. And there we go. Same thing, it's got a washer out. Okay, oil pump drive, gear. And now we can pull the oil pump out, which there's three eight millimeters. One, two, yeah, and three. The oil pump usually is a little stuck. Take a screwdriver. There you go. Just tap it and it pops right up. There we go. You gotta be careful because the shaft comes out. Okay. And you got a little pin here. All right. And you got a washer here. Okay. So, washer. This guy goes in here like that. Okay. And you're gonna to wanna to inspect in here for any gouges. I don't feel any, nothing's catching, so that's good. That cover's still good. And then <clears throat> you reach in here and there's, bring this up so you can see better. There we go. And there's your oil pump right there. So you just take a screwdriver and you can pop it out of here. Or, hang on, I got something better. Or not. Where did I put it? I just had my magnet tool here, but oh well. You can use a magnet tool to pop it out or screwdriver. Again, look for any scratches, anything that feels rough. Or you do the smart thing and just replace the oil pump. So you know you've got a fresh oil pump in there with no issues. Cause come on, this thing's had metal going through it. Yeah, got some gouges there. So we're gonna put a new oil pump in this one. All right, now we can split the case. Using a 13 millimeter, you're gonna go around and take all your case bolts off. All over the place. There's a ton of them. You got two hidden ones in here. All right. All right. 
We got all our case bolts out. Now, all the bolts are the same. There's no difference on the bolts. So some engines, you know, will have shorter or longer bolts. Not on the 570. They're all the same. So get all your bolts out. Alrighty, so we got all our bolts taken off. Now we can pop this guy off. So basically just take a mallet and start. There it goes. Case is split. Layer down. Oh yeah. This is for up here. That's for your counterbalance. And there we go. We can pull it off. Oh, that bearing's toast. That one in there looks pretty bad. All right, so there's our side cover off. Set that aside. And there we go. We've got our engine. Counterbalance. Pop your counterbalancer out. Set that aside. And there's our crankshaft. All right, now we got to get this crankshaft out. So it's pressed into the bearings on this side of the cover. Now you can take it and have a repair shop press it out, okay, using a press. They can drive it out that way. There is a special tool that you can buy from Polaris that presses it out. Or you can do what I'm about to do. Now granted, I do things like this to show the average person that you don't need specialty tools and all the crazy stuff to get something done. Now, since we're not reusing this crank or those bearings, it doesn't matter if we do some damage. All that matters is we get that out without hurting the case. So, I took the wheel from the Ranger. Okay, it's upside down. Took some cardboard, okay, and put it between the rim and the case to keep from any marring. And then, you get yourself Good old trusty hammer. Nail it, sledge, whatever. And start driving it out. Now it's gonna hit the bottom. But once it starts doing that, now we can just there you go. Crank shafts out. Easy peasy, no special tools, no having to pay anybody, because we ain't reusing that thing, so. It's out, all right. All right, and there we have our case halves, all taken apart. So now, we can check out our bearings. These guys all feel good. Okay, now these bearings, if you have to replace them, most of the time I find these ones are never bad. They don't have any play or anything. And these ones feel really good. And like I said, I'm suspecting somebody rebuilt this. But these guys, basically you just take your retainer ring off here. Okay. Pop your seal off. And then same thing. Using a press, you can drive these out. You're gonna have a bearing, a spacer, and a bearing. And then you can drive your new bearings back in. I recommend using a press and not a hammer on those. And uh, these are the bearings here. Okay, oops. Three, five, one, four, three, eight, nine. All right, so these are your crank bearings for the PTO side, all right? So we got those bearings there. And then on this side, 
Got our other bearing here for the counterbalance. You have your crank bearing here, which we're gonna change. I'll show you all how to change this in the next video. And you got your pickup down here. I take that off and clean it out really good. Okay, so there's your pickup. And then uh, got your oil filter housing over here. And if you want, you can pop these off. filter housing with the o-rings in here pop these off okay and you can clean all that out and, then... and this is your oil filter check valve in here you can pop that out with a pair of Yep, that was my finger. <laughs> that was my finger, folks. Gotta yeah, be careful. This one's all stuck in there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's just your. Your check valve. Basically, what I like to do is just take a bolt and make sure it, it moves. And this one works good. All right. If it doesn't move like that, if it's stuck frozen, time for a new one. All right. Well, everyone, there we go. The 570s all torn down and ready to get its rebuilt. So now I'm going to take everything, get all my parts cleaned up. I'm going to get all the oil, all this brown dirt. We're going to get these all cleaned up, washed up, looking really good again. And then we can start the rebuild process. Now the next few videos, probably be two or three videos showing the rebuild process because I'm going to do it in steps. So we'll do lower end, top end accessories, so on and so forth. I know these videos are a little bit longer, but I want to make sure I'm giving all the information that you all need to do this job as easy as possible. Now granted, I know we hit this out with a hammer. Really didn't do much damage to the end of this shaft. I could probably clean that up and reuse it, but I didn't care because it's getting a new crank, which is over on the shelf right now. So. I think I'm gonna end this video here. I'm gonna get everything cleaned up and then uh, we'll start the rebuild process. I've got all the new parts on the shelf and uh, we'll take it from there. So again, I hope you all enjoy my videos. Please do what you can to share, like, subscribe, help me build my channel because it is working. We are building up Polaris Nuts Garage, like pretty good, pretty good. And I appreciate y'all. So, until next time, stick around, come back, join me right here on Polaris Nuts Garage.